You're all very welcome to our presentation today entitled Assistive Technology in the Classroom, a collaboration between IT Carlo and WIT. The SOAR project is an inter-institutional collaboration on access. It brings together the South Cluster of Higher Education Institutions, Munster Technological University, Institute of Technolo Technology Carlo, University College Cork, and Waterford Institute of Technology. In collaboration with community partners, the project devises and implements strategies to increase access to higher education for underrepresented groups. The SOAR project is funded by the Programme for Access to Higher Education, Path Strand Tree, and is operationalized through five work streams. Both models for assistive technology, or AT, training that are evaluated in this report, the train the trainer model of practice used at RIT Carlo and the student focused attains assistive technology training assistant independent success model of practice at what WIT are part of the enabling transitions work stream. I'll now hand you over to my colleague Magella McCarthy from WIT. Thank you very much Rebecca. So as Rebecca said, all five um, higher education institutions, we all work together and we learn from each other. That being said, each HEI have developed their own unique model of practice, developed in line and in consideration with the overall key objectives outlined by the Enabling Transitions work stream. In WIT, we developed an assistive technology outreach training program known as ATTAINS, and that's what I'm going to present today. Um, my colleague Angela Costello and IT Carlo will then talk to you about the train the trainer model. So the rationale for the program development. What we were seeing, and we were seeing an increasing number of students presenting at third level with additional and diverse learning needs. Currently, 7% of the student population in WIT are registered with the Disability Office. And of those students registered, over half, 53%, are presenting with a diagnosis of a specific learning disability, for example, dyslexia, as their primary diagnosis. Right across the cluster, students are continuing to self-report very little or no knowledge of assistive technology prior to transitioning to higher education and reporting that such knowledge may ha have been beneficial to them if known earlier, for example, throughout the post-primary um, cycle. So the ATTAINS programme development. My role entails developing an assistive technology outreach training programme for students with disabilities from underrepresented groups. It was very limited research um, with little or no empirical evidence in relation to developing AT competency and adoption in schools, utilising an outreach training approach. However, there's a quote that I found that I find very powerful and very fitting to our programme that is for most of us, technology makes things easier. For a person with a disability, it makes things possible. So because at the time there was very little research um, available um, on, as to how to base our programme and how to develop our programme, we looked at what was currently working and looking at established outreach programmes within our own Access and Disability Office. We held consultation with key stakeholders in the area, post-primary staff, teachers, principal, special education needs coordinator, a relevant community organisation, as well as members of the WIT access and disability teams. And we held discussions as to how best to develop and to how best to deliver an assistive technology outreach programme. Schools were reporting that um, they had very little or no knowledge of assistive technology and also very little um, training had been delivered to their students. And this was due to time constraints, resources, capacity. So what the outcome from those consultations were, it was to, or it was decided, I suppose, through consultation, that there was a need to develop and to deliver a training programme that was student focused and to be delivered within the student's own school or learning environment. So the assistive technology outreach programme really was developed through this consultation. And the assistive technology program is attains and that stands for assistive technology training assisting independent success and developed by wit through the support from the path soar enabling transitions work stream 
The aim of our programme is to introduce assistive technology techniques to support students' independent learning with reflection and opportunities to independently practice skills built into the programme time. We've defined some key learning objectives, and these are to improve knowledge and understanding and use of learning platforms, the Office 365 or the Google Packages or the Google Suite applications, to build and promote competency in using assistive technology, to support students' independent learning and to improve academic performance, to overcome, overcome barriers within students' learning environment by using free, where possible, assistive technology to support home, school work and study, to enable a smoother transition to higher education, as students will be familiar with the writing, reading and studying tools for their needs, to, to promote college readiness among students with learning disabilities, to the introducing assistive technology supports available to students within higher education, and prepare preparation for state examinations for those students awarded the use of the exam reader pen for their junior or leaving certificate. The programme is based on some criteria. The first is that it's student focused. It's a six week programme and it's targeted at students who have a specific learning disability, for example, dyslexia. The criteria broadening to, a, to um, target additional students' courts. We also delivered the training to teachers, educators and parents, and those working with students with additional and learning needs, additional and diverse learning needs. Training is delivered through our community partners, for example, the Waterford Teacher Centre, as well as running summer training programmes, in addition to training staff and parents in our partner schools. And here is an example of our working programme content. A programme can be very much adapt, adapted and tailored to each school's or community partner's requirement. Simply select um, from the content, um, as you can see here. Um, and this, again, is very much a working programme. So some of the program outcomes that we are seeing to date. Some schools are reporting that our program has been embedded or benchmarked to the school's digital learning curriculum for junior cycle and embedded within the computer science curriculum for senior cycle. There's been an increased usage among students of the exam reader pens for their state examinations, an increased awareness, knowledge and independence in using assistive technologies um, or assistive technology techniques for learning. Some schools are reporting that their students have raised aspirations for transitioning to higher education. And a recent evaluation, as well as feedback forms administered to students upon graduating from the programme, found that 100% of students reported that the Attains programme met their needs, and all students rec would recommend the programme to other students with similar needs to their own. Currently, we have four par 14 partners nine of these are post-primary schools, one college of further education and four additional community partners. We're currently working within nine of the 16 post-primary schools across Waterford, including all four DESH post-primary schools. We work with and support the Waterford College of Further Education, the Waterford Teacher Centre. We partner with the Waterford Schools Completion Team. We support the service users and staff of the Central Remedial Clinic, the CRC at University Hospital, Hospital Watford, as well as supporting the Dyslexia Association of Ireland, the Watford branch. Current student reach, um, and these are looking at figures from 2020 to 2022, noting that our programme was significantly impacted by COVID and the result in school closures. However, to date, we have 89 students have either graduated or currently participating in the programme, and all of these are from underrepresented groups. For example, 79 of the students have diagnosed disability, 65 students have attended DESH post-primary schools, 13 students from an ethnic minority group, and six high support needs students. So these were the service users of the CRC. And the next steps for our teens programme. So ongoing consultation and programme review with all current partners. We want to continue to work with and support our current partners. And this is incredibly important to us as we want our program to be sustained and to be continued to be delivered post program um, funding. We will continue to work with embedding and to benchmark our program into the school curriculum, an outcome that we've already um, achieved in some schools to date. 
and we want to continue to target those staff and those staff who are in a position to further develop and to continue the program into the future. We also want to target additional post-primary schools across Waterford as well as the wider WIT catchment area, in addition to targeting primary schools, as well as establishing and targeting additional community partners. That concludes my presentation um, on the WIT Attains Assistive Technology Outreach Program. If you have any queries or questions with regards to the program, please email me directly and my email address is here. I'm now going to hand you over to my colleague in IT, Carlo Angela Costello, um, who will talk to you about her model of practice. So I will stop sharing my screen now. Thank you very much. Hi, and my name is Angie Costello. I'm here at the Disability Officer in IT Carlo, and our program was Enabling Transition Assistive Technology Program. We named the program thus because we felt that the whole word enabling transition was very important, be it from primary to post primary or post primary to third level, or anything to apprenticeships to further education. So we figured that it would be a trigger for a remembrance, if not the mouth of our program um, after the fact. So there was low levels of prior knowledge around assistive technology across the board when we initially started. That went from various areas, from any of the, the uh, post-primary that we worked with initially. And we looked at the importance of AT to create a level playing field in the classroom, both in post-primary and beyond. So AT has the potential to improve functioning, reduce activity limitations, and promote social inclusion and increase education and civic life. So basically what that means is that not only is it in the classroom, but outside the classroom itself. It's recognized as a human right by the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disability, and it can foster independence, as I said, both inside and outside the classroom. It also enhances the educational experiences. The initial, um, the initial thought processes when we decided to join uh, this program was that it would align also with Carlos Institute values as outlined in our own strategic plan of 2019-2023 that has changed somewhat with us aligning more so with WIT for the SETU um, college. So the learners experience is at the center of all we do. And this strategic plan identifies the need to ensure learners across the board have access, they have retention, they have progression and engagement uh, in all they do in terms of academia on the college, but particularly even on the social setting. So by increasing proficiency in IT Carlo, uh, we decided to go for the train to trainer approach simply because um, we had worked with some of the schools. There was limitations for us in terms of uh, you know, getting students in the right place at the right time in terms of their timetabling and also even in reaching in the schools. So when we looked at students, we found it was well, we did work with them and we still do work with them and they're wonderful to work with as in they are very much inform our programs going forward. Uh, we also looked at, at the idea that maybe train the trainer approach was just more suitable for what we were rolling out. So um, often we find it challenging to know how to pass on knowledge and skills we possess in a way that's clear. It engages adult learners intellectually. But by delivering, I suppose, challenging content, which we would support in fairness with PowerPoint presentations, workshops, face-to-face -face, um, webinars, uh, any of those areas at all, we would look at in terms of providing the skills uh, for the, and provisions for staff, particularly in schools. So mostly we were looking at uh, working with teachers, for the most part, principals, um, and then send coordinators and send staff. We looked at the universal design for learning then in terms of creating the program because it's an approach to teaching and learning that gives all students equal opportunity to succeed. It recognizes that if students can't access information, they basically can't learn it. So UDL in the classroom um, allows for materials to become accessible to all types of learners. In terms of AT, they then have options for reading, print, uh, including print, digital, text to speech, and audio books. And for digital text, there's also options for text enlargement and screen readers. So that's basically what our, our initial focus was on. We created generic programs then, and that was reflective of the needs of the groups of participants or the audience themselves. 
because we were working from initially post primary, then we moved in to various other collaborations. And with that came its own um, interest in what area they wanted to cover, particularly. So in terms of uh, levels, different levels, we would have worked from in post primary from one to three, particular feature, and then from three to to a level five, which would be the leading start. And they were mimicked and merged in the different agencies we worked at as well. Uh, so that is what informed uh, how we put our programs together. The, so the impact on educators and students, we got positive feedback from the workshops and the webinars from students, parents, and professionals to professionals to include your teachers and your, um, your principals, etc. We have positive feedback from lecturers themselves as we ran with various courses here in the college, be it to lifelong learning or through uh, the CPD digital badge, which ran during uh, uh, reading week. And then we had positive feedback from students at third level. So that's our own students coming back to us and saying, look, that out. might be something simple, small bit of software, but it was uh, made a difference to them and that level playing field came to the fore then uh, because of that which was brilliant. So then we were looking at the holistic approach to it. Not only do you look at AT in the classroom in terms of the enabling transition program, but we also would look at uh, now how does that transfer to home and social life, et cetera, et cetera. So we worked a lot with your tablets, your, your iPad, your phone, be it iOS or Android, we have all the digital technology we could possibly put on to allow the students to transfer from school to home. And we would have had the chats with uh, the teaching staff and the parents through the various technology workshops to, uh, to ensure that everybody knew uh, what each of them were using. And we used feedback uh, from the workshops to inform uh, future workshops and uh, future programs. Uh, embedding the knowledge was key also. So how are we going to embed the knowledge? But basically how we did that was we used the, train, the, the trainer approach allowed us to um, embed it in the schools because the staff stayed but the students moved on. And that was the same for any other area we moved on, we moved into. It was all staff related for that reason. Um, we looked at mentoring uh, within the schools programs. And what we did there was we worked with TY students. So we worked with students uh, at 25 recently and we shared a whole week program with them. And their feedback was wonderful because again, working with them, they knew a lot of the language of, of uh, AT. They knew a lot of the disabilities around AT. So it raised awareness of disability as well. And also what you could actually work with. There was also some students in class with disabilities. So they, they kind of knew from that, that you know it did create a level playing field for all of them. So we followed up links on all of our workshops, be it in the schools or outside of the various collaborations. Um, and so that basically formed a toolkit for anybody that was working with students with disabilities, which allowed them to dip in and out of it, depending on the needs. So they might have somebody with one particular issue this year, but a different issue next year. So we covered as many issues. All disabilities basically were covered from your physical to your cognitive, so diverse, area altogether and uh, including um, uh, students who had vision or um, hearing uh, issues. So we invite uh, parents and carers as participants on the programs. That particularly worked well when it was online uh, so that there was awareness of AT, as I said, in the home and as well as the school. What were the challenges? Well, there was a fine line between initiated contact with the, student, with the schools and stalking them. And that was the same with any area. Uh, the carrot always was, if we got one school in, we got the rest. If we got one uh, ETB in, we got the other one. You know, then that followed true, which was brilliant. The challenges identified also include time constraints in the classroom, allowing for the fact that very little time for um, the teachers to show students how to use X, Y, and Z. So we had to keep them to a minimum and say, look, that's why the toolkit, dip in, dip out, as, as it works here. Time constraints then for online provision would be you have an hour, an hour and a half to promote an area that you want to cover with AT and between chats, et cetera, et cetera. Sometimes it was either a very fast workshop or you just had enough time. So you had to be all the time uh, conscious of your, your timing when you were delivering. 
So COVID-19 all oh, 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 a big impact. Uh, we thought we just went online because we had already signed a memorandum of understanding one of the uh, education centers, which I'll discuss in brief uh, minute. And so for us, tough transition for everybody to go online, but we got used to it fairly fast as we got to. So provision of AT service in the classroom was another thing that we looked at. There was huge challenges, especially around hardware, for instance, because our, our uh, delivery was on freeware for the most part, not proprietary. So we could deliver the software, we could show them where it was and how it, what it did, and you know, using your various platforms. But if you didn't have the hardware, well, then there to the difficulty. That was particular to uh, primary schools as well as those primary schools. So, in terms of collaborations, then collaborative partners, as Magello already mentioned, was the South Coast of itself, uh, on Poisson. Um, provides people of all ages with pathways to learning and leadership and enterprise, and it offers a variety of programs in areas education and care, parenting, uh, community, and further higher education. So they have an online education program, and actually lifelong learning here in IT Carlo work in conjunction with Ancasan, uh, and it brings ethos, uh, be globally or to locations across the country, to the various community partners they work with. Which was included in ourselves. So that Ampasan actually kicked off a program in 2019. We were delighted and are delighted to have them on board. So local secondary schools, then there was about six secondary schools initially. Uh, five of them were local and one was in Wexford. And we worked with them and we still continue to do so. Oh, we stick them. Um, it's been pretty hard. So uh, they're constantly playing catch up because you're talking about same coordinators. So uh, people coordinating forces that. They're trying to finish and trying to catch up. So slipping us back in to finish up the programs can be a little bit of difficulty. The education centres, which would include Leash, uh, Kilkenny and Wexford, all signed memorandum, memorandum of understanding with us. And they provide the venue. They do all the, the uh, promotion of our material, et cetera, et cetera. And we, we give the workshops, be it face-to-face -face or online. Online mostly at the moment, going back into face-to-face. -face. We have a summer program coming up as well with Wexford. So we're hoping to, to um, um, run that as well with the other education centres. We're involved with KCE to be and Leash Offaly e to be, and again through all their different umbrella organisations such as Back to Education Initiative, uh, the Youth Reaches, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They have the learning skills. So again, there's your generic program because it has to be. We can't roll out the same things then as maybe some other area. And then Kite. Uh, Kite is the uh, support services here. It uh, covers Carlo, Wexford, I think it's Tipperary as well, and into Wexford or into uh, Kilkenny. It's based in Kilkenny actually, and it's for ASD students. So the ASD students that work with them, we are rolling out an uh, assistive technology program too, and also to the staff of uh, Kite, which we've done so recently. So the further development of the project, we're hoping to expand it to include primary schools where possible. Again, the issues around the fact that they haven't got the hardware, we've already experienced that. So there are a few have contacted us and we're just going to go back in and see what it is we can do to support them. Uh, we're currently working with Kite, as I just mentioned, putting forward a project with the National Learning Network, which is better known as the NLN, and we're working with the staff and students there. Um, and that's in the near future, actually, I think starts at the end of this week, and then we're rolling out uh, sessions then. We're inviting the education centres to run summer programmes, as I already mentioned, follow on from our accreditation programme. So that was accredited through from Condra. Initially, it was face to face. Then we accredited it to go online, and we're not quite sure how that's going to roll yet. And the continued collaboration with our collective and collaborative partners uh, is what we're looking at uh, in the future. Our, I suppose, software we would cover would be everything that would would, uh, I suppose everything, that's, that sounds strange, but everything at the moment that would be beneficial to anybody with any issue in terms of disability. And oftentimes we find that we sometimes look at the stuff and use it ourselves because it's, it's that brilliant. So it's great for both the staff, for the students, uh, for whole life as well. And so that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Thanking uh, um, Jella and Rebecca is now going to talk to you about the research end of uh, this whole program.
Hi, so my name is Rebecca Brennan, and I'm going to talk to you about the evaluation that took place. So the evaluative research conducted by the SOAR project aimed to assess examples of each model of practice currently operational in the South Cluster around assistive technology, which Magella and, and Angela just outlined so well. The train the trainer model of practice at IT Carlo and the Attains student focused program at WIT. While the IT Carlo AT program is relatively established, um, the Attains program was evaluate, evaluated at its formative stages. And just to say at this point that the findings in this regard are best positioned as a snapshot of a moment in time for the Attains program when it was in its infancy. And a future evaluation is planned. So the five main research questions that have formed this evaluation was how adequate are both programs as they currently operate in terms of raising awareness of AT, increasing proficiencies in AT and integrating AT into the classroom? What was the impact of the AT training on the students with diverse abilities and on the educators who used AT in the classroom? What were the challenges which were encountered in delivering the programs? What are the opportunities for development and improvement in future iterations? And in what way were collaboration and partnerships beneficial or insufficient in terms of development and delivery of both programs. So data collection occurred in three phases between December 2020 and June 2021. Phase one consisted of two online surveys. So an online survey for IT, for IT Carlo was conducted using the Google Forms, Forms platform consisting of 30 questions. It was disseminated to 100 professionals in the education sector who had attended AT training workshops and 42 responses were received. So that equated to a 42% response rate. The data was analyzed using Excel. For the Attains program at WIT, an online survey was stu for students was also conducted. The survey was disseminated to 10 students and 10 responses were received. This is equated to a 100% response rate. And again, survey data was analyzed using Excel. Phase two of research consisted of five qualitative semi-structured online interviews. They were conducted with four self-selected professionals related to the AT program in IT Carlo and one professional WIT. One interview was conducted with a post-primary student who had attended Attains training at Waterford IT as well. The interviews were conducted by myself and Aoife Horgan of the SOAR project. We recorded them using MS Teams and transcribed them subsequently. The data from the interviews was thematically coded a qualitative data management software program and thematic analysis was then used to analyze the data and organize the findings of the research. Phase three were, was two focus group interviews which took place with access practitioners at IT Carlo and WIT and those interviews were conducted by myself and Aoife Horgan of the SOAR project also. So the key findings from all those phases of research, I'm going to split them into two, one referring to IT Carlo and the other referring to WIT. So key findings from the research evaluating the train the trainer model used by IT Carlo found mixed responses in the data set around prior knowledge and use of AT. So while the survey data indicated a reasonable level of awareness proficiency prior to training amongst education educators, interestingly, when that was interrogated in the interviews, a low level of awareness or proficiency was indicated prior to training. But post-training, knowledge, awareness and proficiency improved across the data set. So the impact of AT training was described as largely positive for students and professionals. Some of the challenges identified included time constraints, COVID-19 and the financial cost of AT devices. The enabling transitions team involved with AT training for educators have embedded plans to continue and expand upon this model of practice. And I think Angela spoke about that already from which the evidence we gathered from the evaluation has been a success to date. And there were some opportunities for improvement identified through this research, which Angela is now following up on. With regard to the Attains programme, 
The evaluative research found that the Attains programme operated in WIT began with a really strong network of collaborators and supporters. The most significant challenge that the programme faced was COVID-19 and the resultant school closures. Therefore, as I've said, this report is best positioned as a snapshot of Attains initial work with recognition that since data collection for this report, significant developments have been made and will be the focus of an upcoming report. In the data for this initial work stream, 80% of survey respondents reported that the programme did meet their needs and all respondents reported that the AT training course was helpful. Expansion of the peer-to-peer -peer mentoring models to include primary school cohorts was discussed in the data set from the attained team of professionals and was fully supported. Professionals expressed the need for additional support, perhaps from the higher education sector, in providing a centralised hub where edu educators could seek out information if needed around transitioning to college. And many of the professionals interviewed expressed a desire to increase their own knowledge of AT devices so that they could better meet the needs of their students. Overall, the data from this evaluation indicates that a, a UDL universal design for learning approach to AT is warranted. So some recommendations arose from this evaluation. Again, some of these have been implemented since the evaluation took place. So our key recommendations for practice were the students who use AT should be given a meaningful role across the training delivery arc. Expansion of the peer-to-peer -peer men mentoring model was discussed in the data set from the attained team of professionals. The value of peer-to-peer -peer mentoring has been highlighted in previous work, which studied the needs of students from specific target groups. Expansion of both models to the primary school cohort should be facilitated as early intervention has been proven to result in better outcomes for persons with diverse abilities. There was evidence to suggest that some educators had a limited awareness of where to access support in preparing their students for using AT as part of transitioning to the higher education setting. It may be outside the remit of HEIs to provide such support. However, an independent centralized AT hub, such as the AHEAD AT Hive, where primary and post-primary educators can go to seek information or other supports, could provide coordinated AT connections between post-primary and higher education sectors. Disability support services and HIs are very aware of the benefits of AT for students with diverse abilities, and they encourage the appropriate use of AT that match the individual needs of students. This includes ensuring accessibility of a range of AT devices. In this regard, a really important recommendation is that freeware should be used wherever possible. Sufficient time and resources should be allocated for training of students in AT within the curricula of post-primary schools, given student proficiency in AT enables wider educational benefits, learning pathways, and allows for students to study all topics. Some of these practice recommendations have already been implemented by both institutions since the evaluation, with a further report on the developments achieved by attains upcoming, which is a testament to the hard work and dedication of all involved. Some recommendations for policy, which came forth from the SOAR project evaluation, is that more emphasis on AT and our national disability policies would support stakeholders and people who need AT devices in education to have their constitutional and human rights further enshrined in policy documents. Stakeholder engagement and participation in policy development and needs analysis are essential. The voices of students who use AT should be present at policy level. A specific national AT policy would be welcomed to further strengthen the recognition of need in this area, to ensure investment and to, ve to develop a standardized method for AT training delivery and outcome measurement. Funding should be increased so as to ensure provision of appropriate AT devices and products that meet the individual and subjective needs of students from primary school level up to higher education level, and to ensure that financial cost does not hinder educational pathways for people with diverse abilities. Again, additional promotion of freeware is vital. 
Finally, a research body that examines the connective relationship between success in educational settings and use of AT would help to develop a better understanding of the benefits and limitations of these products and devices. Thank you for your time and attention. We wish to extend our gratitude to the professionals and students who kindly participated in this results in this research. We also wish to thank in particular the following professionals who couldn't be here today. Laura Hartree, Disability Officer and Coordinator at Waterford IT and Ashleen McHugh, Access, Access Practitioner at IT Carlo. Thank you. Thank you very much.